Alrighty, so uh, last night in class in week day 12, week 12, we had a really great discussion about the end of semester. So I'm going to go over the changes we've all agreed to. And for those of you that weren't in the discussion, you know, I'm open to hearing your feedback about this. But before I jump into that, I just want to go over that um, I've now made available the week, um, the day 13, week 13 learn together and we do a whole section this week <clears throat> sorry and um i want you uh you'll have two things i want you to do in relationship to our learn together one is that after i go over the changes that we agreed to in class last night to the end of the semester i want you to comment on those so you obviously have to watch the rest of this video to get that and then i want you to have the experience of doing another deployment deploying to heroku so if you because a couple of you did the web server which is totally fine the one we did with andrew if you did that one last week then this week do your dev3 and vice versa if you did dev3 then do the web server this week um, and either way, right, just give me the link to the one that you have done for this week. And the reason I think this is important is that we're going to deploy, I'm pretty sure, I should verify this, but regardless, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure we'll deploy the API to Heroku. You know, as I'm saying that, I'm not completely sure because I've looked at the last section. But regardless, I want you to know this con how to do uh, create more than one Heroku app. In a way to help you, I have uh, updated my uh, documentation that I started here. And um, and again, this is actually, I, I updated the file and didn't update the heading. But this is, and again, the SSH keys didn't seem to throw anybody for a loop. Some of the Heroku did, though. And the part of the Heroku that did was when, well, after you had actually created it, it was when you were actually going to push that code into Heroku. And of course, um, this is the command here that we had to modify for our directory structure. But what I saw last night was, and, and I know Jared commented that this shouldn't be true if when you create, like when you run the create, it should update your remote. Right, but I've noticed now with three or four students, this is not always true. So I just want to show you how once you're going to create a second uh, app to deploy, um, then you need to give it, um, you'll need to make sure your remote uh, is correctly set up or when you go to push your code, it won't work because it'll be trying to deploy to the old one. So this is the code, of course, you need to change. Oh, I got to put 3000 there, but uh, I didn't see anybody with challenges here. It was really when, uh, after they completed the Git workflow, uh, they were having some challenges. So what I ended up doing, and by the way, there are other commands on Heroku you can do to do something similar. But if you do a Git remote uh, dash V, that'll actually show you the remotes. Uh, because when he did them in class, so actually, let me do it here. So if I do get remote, actually, I'm on my other one, but it doesn't matter, right? So in this case, when after you create, uh, you can immediately, when you create your next app, you can go in here and look to see if this was updated, okay? And some of you, like I, I haven't gotten this to work. I thought it was just my Linux, but I've also noted, noticed last night that this can also be true for folks on Windows. So what you can do is actually you can do, again, there's other commands to do this, but get remote, remove Heroku, look at it, make sure it's gone. That was another thing we ran into last night. And then just add it back. And the key is, uh, this is the standard and you would put your app name, whatever you customize it here, verify that it's there, and then you can uh, attempt the push. Uh, to Heroku and see if you're getting errors. And really important here is make sure you have no errors on the local running because if you have an error, it will not, when it goes to push to Heroku, it actually won't give you the app. It'll give you an error and it'll say, look at the logs or some other message. Okay. So FYI on that one. 
But I, and the reason I want you to do it is I want you to have this experience. But you can also, if you don't have any issues there, if you run into this section, right? So in this section, we're doing the Mongo install. We're doing the uh, uh, Robo T3, which is a graphical user interface. Um, I ran a, into a couple issues on my uh, Linux box, but um, I worked around them. And I uh, have, I think at least one of you I worked with last night and have, were able to uh, run that with no problem. The one thing if you do, um, and this is here, right? This command, when you actually go to run, uh, the MongoDB. Um, if you have any issues with this, you might want to check your path commands. Uh, I know we played with this last night um, and got this working for a student. Uh, and again, this is going to be unique to your setup. So this might be the only thing. And again, on this on this reply here, you can talk about that if you had any issues, right? So again, you have several things you could look at this week. Okay. So now let me move on to the end of the semester. So we talked about this last night because here we are, if you're watching this uh, in this week, right? We have one more week and then we have spring break and then I have developed four scheduled here. And as I had said before, I was not completely uh, solid on what we are going to do for develop it for, but I think... No, I think we're going to make this decision that actually we're going to not not do develop it for, but roll the points for this into develop it five. Because the end of this class really is creating your own API. Okay. And we're going to, we are already going to learn, relearn promises in section 10, but then we're going to actually create the, uh, an API. And so um, this is about, I think it's about four hours of content. So what this change allows us to do is have a little more time with the content and a, a little more time actually uh, working on the develop it. So I'm going to show you on the calendar what this is going to do. And also after I do that, I will show you just a draft of what I've created for the develop it five, the last one. So to be clear, uh, on that last develop it, uh, whatever you get on that as far as a score will also be what I put in the score for develop it for. Okay. I'm not necessarily going to change um, this. I'm going to leave it here. Just know that that's true. And I think I drafted some content last night on this just to give you an idea, right? Uh, about the, you know, just the heads up about it. Okay. So let me show you on the calendar what this means, right? So here we are. And what this also means, and I recommend this, is if you have time. Now, I'm actually not an instructor that says you have to do over stuff over break, but I'm, I'm going to say this. If you have time over break, I would actually recommend you start working already on this last section, right? So what I'm going to do, and this will look a little weird. I'll end up having to change some names maybe, but I'm actually going to move this code up to here. I'll move this learn together to here. And just keeping that there. And then if we roll into May, uh, what that means is this becomes here, this becomes here. And by the way, this is the week I'm gone. So I almost considered not having anything here, but I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to roll this in the code up. It's the last piece. Because what I ended up doing is I broke this last section into three, uh, six, about six to seven uh, lectures because um, it's great stuff in there. Okay. And, and the more time you get to spend with that, the better. So what this allows us to do is in this schedule, have a week, the, the week that I'm back for you to work on your develop at five. Okay. Um, but that will be due at the end of class on the last, the finals week of the semester. Okay. I will have a learn together week eight or sorry, this day. So actually remember, because I've moved this, the naming is going to be off. So don't let that throw you. Uh, but what this does is, again, it allows us a little more time with this last content and it allows you a little more time to work on your uh, develop at five. So that's really what I wanted to talk about is just the develop at five, the last one. So what I've done here, I should do it here. Actually, I'll do it here is I have just put down my initial thoughts. And this is you saw some of it in develop it four. So in the last develop it here. Uh, what, so what you're going to do is you're going to create, right, uh, and REST API 
that does CRUD operations um, for the topic of your choice. So many of you are going to, I think, choose Dev1. There's several of you that have actually been working on the same development concept all the way through, and that's great. Some of you had different concepts of Develop It 1 and Develop It 2. Uh, but I think many of you will choose your develop it one, whatever that was, and you're going to implement, you're going to create an API with that uh, code function and with that uh, concept. So, and so where he's going to show us the task manager app, which basically just is adding a task uh, and some, some related information and then updating that task and then deleting it, reading it, right? So the CRUD operations recreate, update, and delete. Then what you will do, and you can end, you will end up using some of the code that you wrote. Like for me, when I did my real coin, this is the one that I'm going to use to develop, uh, to use in my develop at five for creating my REST API for the CRUD operations. So I just want you to get that idea in your head as we move into this section. Because as you will see, and we're not going to create a front end, we're only going to use the eight, we're only going to create the server side of this to where then you're, you'll be interacting with it, with it, with a program called Postman. And that's, what's going to show you, you know, how your code is working and basically it'll act as your kind of your front end, uh, just so you can interact with your endpoints that you're creating. Okay. But again, as I just want you to give this idea, because if you want to choose a different topic, no problem, just come talk to me about that before you start working on it. Right. Uh, because I want you to do something a bit, a little more, I shouldn't say a bit, a little more sophisticated than his task manager. I want it to have some additional functionality. Um, you know, like again, the example I had, there were several great examples in class of people have done some really high end and some just basic, which is fine. It really is okay that you have very different things that you're trying to accomplish. Uh, but the point is that you're going to take that concept or something different and implement it in this REST API uh, programming paradigm that we're going to learn using these CRUD operation endpoints that you're going to learn how to code. And that's what you're learning here. Right. So as I'm and I'm looking through here, the other cool thing is we're going to do async await, which is awesome. Um, and these are creating and deleting the endpoints. But now that I'm looking at it, we may not get to deploying this. Um, well, let's see, I because I, I don't see it clearly laid out here and I haven't actually that's going to be my task for over at spring break is to get as much of this done as I can so that I can start working on my last develop develop it project. Okay. All right. I think that's enough. It at least gives you an overview. And a bit, again, the learn together this week, you can, and I want you to at least consider the information I've provided here. Ask me any questions that you may have about it. Um, and again, this schedule, uh, even though it says week 15, the dates are different because this is no longer going to be something we actively do because it just didn't make sense. Once I looked at it and I looked at the schedule, it was like, yeah, I could have had you come in and discuss the concepts, which by the way, it's a great reason to come to class. So good because that's where we will discuss these concepts, especially for well, all the code, right? All the code that we're looking at. And so we'll do um, like, you know, next week we'll do the week 13, the day 13, which is the whole section where he's introduced, reintroducing uh, some concepts, but introducing the most new concept, which is how to store your data, how to create, right? Your CRUD, your create, uh, read and update and delete operations in uh, Mongo. And that way, and I like that he's broken this out because it makes sense to learn that reintroducing con the concept of promises. And then we actually get into uh, setting up Mongoose, which is just going to give us a little more SQL-like control on our data, allow us to do some sanitation. But again, I'm not going to get there yet because that's what's ahead of us. I hope this helped you out. Let me know if you have any questions. And again, reply to your day 13 uh, with the two things, sorry, in the learn together with the two things I've asked for. All right, talk to you later.